Hey, good morning, Catalina Foothills Church and friends. It's uh, Pastor Johnston with our Tuesday morning devotion. And uh, this coming Sunday as we are sort of working through our passages and thinking about Lent and how the cross not only brings life to the Christian, the cross brings death. The pattern in the New Testament and the pattern that Jesus set forth for us is that the cross kills us that it may resurrect us, that true life is through death and resurrection. And so we're thinking about this pattern of how the cross kills us, that it may bring life. And, and this week we want to talk about how the cross comes to kill our self-indulgence, kill what some people might use the word as privilege, but it brings sacrifice. And um, Jesus says, Whoever would come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And later says, but whoever wants to be a leader in the church will have to be the servant of all or the slave of all and sacrifice for all. But let's think about James this week just briefly. In James 1, verse 9, it says, Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. I wonder if that's talking about Jonah. Its blossoms falls and the beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. So James is really hard on the rich. Later, he accuses the rich of holding back, holding back fair wages for the workers they've employed and of hoarding wealth in the last days. That's not the only word the Bible has about wealth and the even the, the, the beauty of wealth accumulation and, and the generosity that can come from that. But clearly there's something here that's important. The, the cross itself humbles everyone. It, it humbles those in high position and it raises up those in low positions. And we see that uh, in this passage in James chapter 1. Believers in humble circumstances, and he means by that poor or in jail or outcast, believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. So let's keep in mind that at Jesus' birth, it says about him that even though he was the infinite and eternal God, the one true God, that he had nowhere to lay his head. And he talks about foxes have holes, birds have nests. The Son of Man has no place to, ha to, to lay his head. And at his birth, he's born in a stable in utter, utter poverty, and yet he's the greatest human who's ever been born. And he's saying that when you're in a humble place, in, that can be in poverty or outside of the power structures, you ought to take pride in your high position because God esteems you in your suffering because he talks about how suffering is a blessing here. And that the rich, though, ought to consider that their riches, when they die, will be taken from them, even if it's giving to their family. Nothing goes with us. Not the clothes on our back, not our bank accounts, not our achievement, not our degrees. When we, get to, when we stand before Jesus, there won't be smart and dumb people. There won't be rich and poor people. There won't be articulate and inarticulate people. There won't be athletic and non-athletic people. They'll just be people. There's something about standing in the presence of God and what takes place at the cross that makes us all the same. And that's very frustrating. That can even be debilitating. It can be maddening in a culture that really prioritizes achievement, prioritizes hard work, prioritizes savings, at least we did, of making your own way, of uh, uh, being responsible. All these are even biblical ideas but there's this humbling thing about the cross, and that is all of us need for everything we've ever done to be put on the cross. As the Puritans say, we not only need to repent of our unrighteousness, but even of our righteousness. Even our good works are as filthy rags before God. And see, the cross comes and it kills that sense of achievement. It, not that we wouldn't still want to achieve. It just says, hey, in light of, of what I'm saying to you, you can never look down on another person. You can never say, I wouldn't do that. You can never say, I did this. The difference in you and someone in poverty is where God chose to have you born. God could have permanently put you in poverty in a way that no amount of hard work, no amount of education, no amount of effort would ever have taken you out of. So we ought to be humble, 
because of the cross of Jesus. It puts to death self-righteousness and self-reliance and has us bowed down at the cross. This is why Jesus said, look, the first will be last and the last will be first, which means everybody's the same because before him we have but one cry, Lord, save us. You're our only hope in this life and the next. I look forward to being with you this coming Sunday. I hope you're having a great week. We'll see you soon.